Please welcome to present our final award of the evening, Danielle Carmanos. When Masi Alinajad speaks, something inside me shifts. I lean in and I follow closely because I know change is coming. In her, I hear strength and dedication, charm and compassion. I hear her heartbreak for her native Iran, for the people and the place she loves so deeply. But more than anything, I hear the voice of change and the knocking of a brighter future at our door. Masi's voice is raw and honest, sometimes cracking as she contains rage or holds back tears, but always anchored by her resolve and drive to never stop being a truth teller and a change maker. Hers is the voice that will break barriers and save lives. And this is why the entire world has taken notice. Ask Masi about her courage, and instead she speaks about other women who are making bold statements and sharing their stories, from celebrities cutting locks of hair, to the women of Iran daring to feel the indescribable rush of purpose and possibility. Masi is creating the space for courageous hope, She's defying the law, not accepting a life that's good enough or survivable, isn't just uncomfortable, it's terrifying. The regime pushed Masi out of Iran to minimize her impact, assuming she would give up or move on. They were wrong. She is a force of nature whose impact is already undeniable. The regime looked at Masi and saw a dissident running away. Not a mother, daughter, and friend, fueled by intellect, by love, by passion, prepared to weather great sacrifice. Launching My Self Stealthy Freedom in 2014, Masi created a platform for Iranian women to share their thoughts, stories, and nightmares a community of connection and validation, a space to dare to dream. For the first time, they knew for certain they were not alone. While Masi gives voice to the women and girls of Iran, the regime threatens her life and smears her reputation. They believe fear equals silence and that their power is unstoppable. But bullies rarely see it coming when the bullied fight back. In the wake of Masa Amini's death at the hands of morality police for failing to fully cover her hair, women are spilling into the streets of Iran in historic protest. At times, it sounds like jubilation. At others, like war. Hundreds of civilians have been killed. But still, protests continue. In May of 1941, thousands of Nazis descended on the Greek island of Crete. With most men away at war, they expected an easy victory. They were wrong. Underestimated at first, the women of Crete fought ferociously. They showed the Nazis the power of Ohi, and then they showed them the door. Masi's campaign is empowering the women of Iran to alter the balance of fear in their country. Rather than run away, they link arms, they stand strong, and send some fear back where it came from. Now, teenage girls are taking to the streets in protest. And if anyone here knows a strong-willed teenage girl, and then imagines an army of motivated teenage girls, well, there's probably not a more unstoppable force in the world. Difficult likes to masquerade as impossible. The women of Crete should have been decimated by the invading Nazis they repelled. 
Rather than accept impossible at face value, they banded together and acted as one. They created possibility. Iran's oppressive regime and the infrastructure that supports it is entrenched. And yet, tonight, all across Iran, women prepare for the seventh consecutive week of protests. They have taken up residence in the line of fire. The morality police and their onslaught of injury and death against nonviolent protesters are met only with the spirit of Ohi, sung louder and louder as one chorus. Masi left Iran in 2009 on assignment, and she is still writing a story. But this one has co-authors, and they number in the millions. On the day when its last words are written victoriously, too many co-authors will be celebrated only in memory. Their supreme commitment, a reminder of an appropriate use of the word. Whether that day comes now or later, rain or shine, one thing is certain, it will be a very good hair day. As long as the regime is in power, it will continue to target Masi Alinajad because she built a massive community of supporters, not by telling them to follow her, but by celebrating them. The only antidote to the regime's fear is Masi's silence, which she doesn't frighten, which doesn't frighten her at all because she's out for theirs too. It is my distinct honor to introduce this video on the Ohi Courage Award recipient, Masi Alina Jad. I'm an Iranian journalist, activist, and a troublemaker for the oppressors. When Masi Alinejad first heard the news of the attack on author Salman Rushdie, she had more reason than most to be concerned. An Iranian-born journalist and women's rights activist, she too has been hunted by the Iranian regime. You can see my picture in Friday Prayer everywhere being hanged. So basically, yes, I can go back, but Definitely, I'll be executed. My window is my social media. The mullahs are watching me and watching millions of women like me who are talking to them and telling them that we're not gonna obey the barbaric laws of the Islamic Republic. And police say has been arrested near the Brooklyn home of an Iranian-American journalist. Police say he was heavily armed. Journalist and activist Masi Alinejad posted the video to Twitter yesterday saying the man was at her home to kill her. She was targeted in an alleged kidnapping plot last year after speaking out against the Iranian regime. Described by the New York Times as the woman whose hair frightens Iran, she founded a campaign against the compulsory hijab, which became the largest civil disobedience campaign in the country's history. Hijab is the most visible symbol of oppression against women. Of course, some women want to wear it, which is beautiful if it's your own choice. Some women protesting against religious edicts by cutting their hair in public and burning their hijab, all in reaction to the death of a 22-year-old Masa Amini who died in custody of the religious police. Mothers, fathers, they relate to her story. They say that it could have happened to their daughters, and they are right. She remains now a leader of the revolt against the Iranian dictatorship that has led to widespread protests over the death of Masa Amini, who was arrested by the morality police because they said her hijab did not cover every hair on her head. If you don't cover yourself, you receive lashes. You go to jail. You won't be able to, to get a job. You won't be able to exist, to live in your own country. Enough 
is enough. We want an end to this regime. Women have been pushing back compulsory hijab laws and all the anti-women laws in Iran. But this is the time that the movement gaining momentum. This is a women revolution. They are the warriors in the middle of the street pushing back Taliban, pushing back the Islamic Republic. These are the true feminists. These are the true Rosa Parks of Iran and Afghanistan. These are the women of suffragists risking their lives, facing guns and bullets. A woman from Afghanistan, from Kabul, sent me a video to show her solidarity. I told her, shall I blur your face? You know what was her response? She said, don't. This is what the Taliban is doing to us. This is what the Islamic Republic is doing to us. They want to make us invisible. And we are in the streets of Iran and Afghanistan together to take our visibility back. Don't blur my face. This compulsory job is like the Berlin Wall. Now we're tearing this wall down and the Islamic Republic won't exist. This is the end of okay, the but we... It's not about me. It's about Iranian brave women within the society. And all I do, I just give them a voice. Your voice is a threat to the autocracy. My voice is more powerful than their weapon. They follow me. I have only one message for them. Can I use your camera and talk to them? Please. Which camera? I really, I know that they're listening to me. This one. I want to tell you, go to hell. I'm not scared of you. I have only one life. You can kill me, but you cannot kill the idea. The idea is just fighting for freedom and dignity. Please welcome the 2022 Ohi Courage Award recipient, Masa Alinejad. Hello, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me, a real honor, to be here tonight alongside President Zelensky and receive Ohide Award. But I want to dedicate this award to the brave women of Iran. Because two months ago, when I received the email about this award, no one knew that there is going to be a revolution led by women inside Iran. So this is the moment that all of us know that. The word Ohi is the most beautiful word for Iranians. So I want to dedicate this award to brave women inside Iran. And I want to repeat their words. I came here tonight. As soon as I learned the word Ohi means no, I said that I'm going there to say Ohi to gender apartheid regime. No to Khamenei as, and his gangs of killers. But let's be honest. Say no to Khamenei, saying no to gender apartheid, saying no to the killers of the Islamic Republic is easy here. Being surrounded by many security bodyguards. So that is why I left my speech there. I changed everything. So I came here to actually talk to you from my heart that eight years ago, when I launched my campaign against compulsory hijab, brave women of Iran joined us. Saba Kordafshari, only 22 years old, she removed her hijab, walking unveiled, saying no to compulsory hijab. 
or he to the regime. She got arrested, received 24 years prison sentence. Before coming here, I was telling myself that she already said oh he to gender apartheid regime. Yasaman Aryani, only 22 years old. She joined White Wednesday's campaign. She received 16 years prison sentence. Mojgan Keshavars, 33 years prison sentence. I felt guilty. I felt bad. I felt the burden on my shoulder. What happened? Their mothers joined to the streets, to the civil disobedience movement, and they said no to gender apartheid regime as well. For years and years, none of the female politicians from the Western countries who went to Iran dared to say no to compulsory hijab laws. They were downplaying our cause. They abandoned us. So today, I am here to say that there is no need for Mahsa Amini to be killed for the whole world to recognize and understand these brave women and repeat their voice to say no to forced hijab, no to gender apartheid regime. There was no need for Nikasha Karami, only 16 year old, who get killed in the street to for, for whole world to understand that they can say no as well. There was no need for Sarina Smailzadeh, only 16, for Siavash Mahmoudi, only 16, for Ghazale, for many teenagers, TikTok generations, young schoolgirls, men and women shoulder to shoulder to get killed, to say no. So today, I want to use this opportunity. I want to thank Ohide Courage. I want to thank everyone to give me this opportunity, actually, to tell the rest of the world that this is the moment that we, the people of Iran and Ukraine, must be united because we are not fighting for ourselves. We are fighting for the whole world. Women inside Iran risking their lives to tell the democratic countries that if we do not get united to end the terrorists like Putin and Khamenei, Believe me, they will get united and they end democracy. So this is the time for all of us here in the West to say no to normalizing Putin and Khamenei. In 2022, our broken heart and the broken heart of the Ukrainians we understood that this is the time that we have to be united. When the Revolutionary Guard shot down the Ukrainian airplane and killed 176 innocent passengers. Now these family members of those victims saying no to gender apartheid regime, no to Islamic Republic. The same regime is helping Putin, sending drones, sending weapons to Putin to kill innocent Ukrainians. So you see, dictators are united, more united than democratic countries. So that is why let's say no to those democratic countries, that they can say no to, the, to Putin and Khamenei, but they still seek to get a deal with our murderers. This is the moment that our unity against the united dictators must be stronger than ever. Thank you so much.